Hello? Dennis? Dennis, why is there a green screen in my living room? Also, why is there a camera set up? What do you mean I still have to do the pics to watch intro? Yes, I understand that some of Split is stuff. Wait, you're telling me you're just gonna put random photos on top of this green screen? You reckon that's comedy these days? You think people are gonna think that's funny? Okay, okay, maybe it could be funny. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay, I will do it. Okay, fine. Fine, 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 fine. Jeez. <clears throat> oh. hmm. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Picks to Watch. The summer split is about to start, and what better way to do it with some fun and interesting champions that could be making their way into pro play. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Shotgunning into the start of this list, it's great. I like my enemies two ways. Did or about to be. <laughs> With games going longer, the outlaw has found his place as one of the best scaling junglers in the game. Unlike other scaling junglers, Graves is difficult to punish in the early game. He doesn't need a cigar to smoke jungle caps in his first clear, keeping him healthy throughout the early game. He also has immense dueling prowess with the passive stacking armor on his quick draw, making him tougher than you would typically expect. On top of that, his high damage, and alongside the disruption from his smoke screen, means anyone who opposes him in a team fight will likely be sent to an early grave. You want to be taking Phase Rush on one of Bilge Water's most wanted, and because of Grave's natural tankiness, you want to prioritize damage and health with the Warrior Enchant into Black Cleaver, with the movement speed of Phage being extremely valuable. Death Dance is also an important pickup as it gives Graves everything he needs. Be aware that picking Graves into long range champions or a comp that can easily kite will likely result in collateral damage coming to your own team. Next up, you used to fear him for being on your own team, but now he's back to his terrifying best. It's Phil Sticks. Come closer, closer. After his rework, Phil can now be a bit more creative with his clear, given that his Bountiful Harvest is now an AoE ability. Out of junglers who can clear Raptors and Red Buff, or Grom and Blue Buff at once, the Scarecrow is outstanding in his field. However, Fiddle is still very weak in early duels, which can make him susceptible to counter jungling. The embodiment of terror truly comes alive once he hits level 6, and he can come out of absolutely nowhere to scare you while you're trying to farm peacefully. His scare tactics only get stronger as the Ancient Fear can control teamfights with his ability to, appropriately, fear the entire enemy team. But perhaps Fiddlestick's greatest strength of all is the psychological damage he inflicts on enemies by spawning effigies across the map. With Fiddle in the game, you can think of each unwarded bush as a surprise party you really didn't want to attend. Though it's worth noting his team also have to play around him with sweepers and deep vision, so he can set up a potential ambush. Without good vision, the scarer may become the scared. Because he's dead. Dark Harvest and Electrocute are both common rune options, while players typically build runic echoes into Zonyas or Leandries, depending on the circumstances before rounding out with more damage. Finally, it was a gibbon that he'd make this list. It's Wukong. My journey's only beginning. The reworked Monkey King is really strong early on, and is worth playing around as he spikes hard off his core itemization. The sooner he gets those, the sooner he can start snowballing. He's especially great when laning into AD matchups, thanks to the passive armor and health regeneration making him obnoxiously tanky. The Wuju practitioner really goes bananas in team fights, though. His crushing blow comes off cooldown very quickly, giving him more sustained damage. Also, he can now ult twice, giving him two knockups in a single fight. On top of this, his decoy can ult too. Even though it doesn't knock up, the damage is enough to create a lot of disruption within a team fight. This buys time for his team to clean up. If you want to equip yourself for Guerrilla Warfare, you'll want to take Conqueror and then go one of two paths. You can build Blade of the Ruined King and Black Cleaver for more on-hit damage, or go towards Tiamat and Trinity Force for more burst. Either way, you'll usually round out with a death stance. Just be wary that Wukong's base MR is very low, so he struggles against AP champions early on, whether they are his lane opponent or in the jungle. That does it for this episode of Picks to Watch. If there are any fun or interesting champions you think could make their way into pro play, be sure to go into the comment section below and let me know. 
The LEC returns June 12th at 5.30pm CEST, and you won't want to miss it, so I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.